Hello everybody and welcome to Unwind to Knit with me. My name is Lisa and this is my podcast where I talk all about my knitting and patterns and yarns and my little online shop that I've got here and I would like to welcome all of my existing viewers that are returning. Thank you very much and if you are a new viewer to my channel um, welcome. I hope you enjoy the contents. Please subscribe. Um, just press that subscribe button and all that means to you is that you do get notified when I post a new episode which is um, generally every two to three weeks. I aim for two weeks but sometimes it's three. So welcome everybody. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram as Unwind to Knit with me. My online shop is unwindtoknit.com and everything I talk about here today will be in my show notes. So you can click, click on the link below. Um, that's always different depending on what device you're watching me on. But I include all the show notes and links to any websites um links to any Ravelry patterns that I talk about so all the information is there for you this could be quite a chatty wee episode so I hope you um, have your knitting and a um, cup of coffee or tea and I hope you're prepared to sit back for an hour or so and um and share this time with me this is actually episode 43, um, so we're getting up there, and I am getting close to two years of podcasting. It's actually in August. It'll be two years that um, since I started this channel. Time's gone really fast. Um, on last weekend, I attended Woolfeast here in Christchurch, and did I say that at the start? I'm from Christchurch, which is South Island of New Zealand. But Wool Feast here in Christchurch is our annual um, yarn show where traders go along and all the public come and stock up and buy lots of yarn. So I was a trader there this year and I had a blast. I just, I just met so many people and thank you, a big thank you to everyone that come and said hello. There were people from all over the South Island travelled to Christchurch for this event um, from down south and um, I know from the Nelson Marlborough region. So a lot of people did travel. They come to Christchurch for the weekend. So just a big thank you. It was a real blast. Uh, um, it went for five hours and I was literally busy for the whole five hours and I didn't even get to go to any other um any to see any of the other traders I didn't get to say hello to any of the other traders um but it was a real blast and I've got to say it took me a couple of days to come down from that I was just so energized by it and one of my highlights um I actually asked my daughter to come along and she was what I called my checkout chick so she operated my FPOS machine um and did all the sales transactions and that was a huge highlight for me we're, um, working alongside my daughter she's she's 22 and I had a friend Karen helping me out and I couldn't have done it without them so um, yeah it was it was really lovely having them there the other highlight was um, my daughter who's 22 she had a couple of years ago knitted her first scarf which was a really chunky um, acrylic yarn that she'd got from a bargain store on very big needles um, and it was just a garter stitch scarf and she'd never shown interest in knitting um, she does wear some of my garments but she'd never really shown interest but after that event she said I want to knit she said that she saw so many younger people and it kind of occurred to her that knitting is just not something that older people do it's actually quite a trendy thing to do and um so she has we got home and she said i want to start knitting today and at the festival i had this free pattern that i've been offering um which is um a wrap you've you've seen me wear it on previous podcasts it's this one here it's a one skein project it's done on a four mil needle and it's 
it's a really great little pattern, but it's also very wearable. Um, I was wearing it at Woolfest. So we got home and she picked out the colour yarn and I said, well, you can wind it. <laughs> and she's, she's actually halfway through it. And yesterday we went and bought wool for her. She's going to knit her first garment. She wants to knit a jersey. And um, I didn't have the yarn that she wanted. She wanted something self-striping in like rainbow colours. Um, so the pattern I've pulled out for her is the Lento, which is um, top down in the round. And yeah, so I'm really excited to um, have my daughter knitting her first garment. So um, that was a highlight for me. Um, there were many highlights, but that was one of my highlights that I wanted to share with you. Like I said, this could be quite a chatty episode. I have got a couple of whips to share with you. Um, I've got some new patterns. I have some new projects that I want to cast on. I have um, a cowl to put out to you to see if anyone's interested in um, a knit along with me. And I also thought today I'm actually going to do a wee segment on my needles. Now, I've had a lot of people talk to me um, on our community Facebook page, but also at the trade event, it occurred to me that there's a lot of new knitters that have re-entered the knitting world after many years of not knitting, and everything's changed. And there seems to be, for a lot of people, a bit of confusion um, about what needles to use because everything's changed so much. So I thought I would just do a wee talk on what I use, what my first set was. So when I got back into knitting, I felt that confusion as well. Um, a lot of patterns, you know, they'll say, you know, start with a, a 40, min, 40 centimetre cable to cast on your neck and then increase and change to a 60 centimetre cable and then do this and that. And I found it really quite overwhelming and confusing. So I thought I would just talk about my needle kit and what I use. Um, this um, podcast, I should have said this in the beginning, I'm not, um, I don't have collaborations or sponsors with anyone. I'm just me doing my thing. Um, and I do have a wee online store to try to support um, my knitting, basically. And... Um, tried to carve out a wee little career path for me in something that I love so there's no sponsors what I talk about is pu purely what I use um, and of course I do sell Chalgu but it's not a sales pitch it's really just to talk about um, if you're new back into knitting what your options are so I am going to talk about that towards the end if you are a very experienced knitter and you've already gone down that path and you have your needle kit, you may find it all a bit boring and you might not want to listen to it. So you will be able to skip forward. But um, I know there are a lot of knitters out there that, that would like to hear about it. So let me refer to my list. The other thing I wanted to talk about, and I'm going to leave the link below. So... Maybe I should get my whip. This is in one of my new leather bags, <laughs> which a lot of you have bought. I'll talk about them at the end of my shop update. So, sorry, I am actually organised. I am surrounded by bags and yarn and patterns that I want to show you. So, my first whip that I'll talk about, I cast it. I did have a cast on in my last episode, and this is actually my second Miss Arena by Caitlin Hunter. So this is um, a project that I have been working on, and I'm very close to having it finished, actually. But here it is here. So I'm doing the eyelet pattern repeat, and I have done six pattern repeats. And I tried it on last night. I put it on cables and tried it on. And I do want a bit more length. Um, the pattern is quite cropped. But I want a bit more length. So I tried it on and decided I'm going to do another whole um, 10 rounds 
pattern repeat but that's it there absolutely loving it i think it's gonna i i just know i'm gonna wear this so much also the sleeves um according to the pattern there's really only um a couple of centimeters i'm probably going to put a little bit more length on the sleeves but other than that i'd really like to have this finished by the end of the week so i the yarn i'm using is one of my under my brand and it's a high twist merino it's one of my favorites and the color i'm using is called volcanic now because it's my yarn <laughs> i actually had when i select i had what i'm saying is i actually had two different batches and i wanted to i had one um skein that was in a different batch and i wanted to use it up so whether your yarn is the same batch or not it's indie dyed it's not commercially dyed and there is always variations from skein to skein so what i talk about a lot and i highly recommend is that you alternate your skeins that way you don't get any pull in of color where there's variations now i didn't alternate the skeins when i was working through this top section for the color work because that just would have been too too difficult but as soon as i got to here i joined in my second ball of wool and i've been alternating the skeins on every round so where my end of round is which is here where i've got my stitch marker every time i get to my stitch marker i drop one and i pick up the other and i knit in the next skein and i keep doing that and it works out perfect there's no pull in of color but there is a method called helical um helical helical i am going to leave the link the youtube link below for this i haven't used the helical method on this because of the eyelet pattern repeat but what you do if you're knitting a whole garment in stock and net stitch in just plain net stitch and you need to alternate skeins this is a fabulous method and i'm going to tell you just briefly what you do but you can go to the link and have a look yourself um, but when you get to your beginning of round you stop three stitches before your other piece of yarn you drop that you slip your three stitches pick up your other piece of yarn and start knitting so each time you stop three stitches before slip them and then keep going and it's just a really neat way of alternating your skeins so my message in that whole bit of ramble was please alternate your skeins if you're using indie dyed yarn it's not hard um, and you will be really much more happy with the result because there's it's happened to me and i'm going to show you an example it's happened to friends that are also very experienced knitters where you go oh, i'll be fine i'll just keep knitting and then when you look at your garment you can really see the variation in color and i know several knitters that have had to rip it all back and start again and alternate the skeins the sample i've got so this cardigan is probably about six or seven years old it's one of the first probably adult garments that i knitted when i first got back into knitting about six or seven years ago now the yarn i bought is malabrigo and this is actually commercially dyed so it's not just indie dyed yarn it can happen with other yarns but I was inexperienced. I, I didn't have any experience with things like alternating skeins. This was a top down cardigan. Absolutely love this. It's four ply Malabrigo. And um, you can see the variegation. It's beautiful. But then when I got down towards the bottom, I just kept knitting, knitting. And it wasn't until I finished that I really saw the difference. Now, down the bottom here, can you see there's a lot more green in that? You can see it there. So this skein is really quite different to this skein. And when I hold, it's really obvious to me, and I'm sure you can see it there from that to that. 
and I've had friends say don't worry about it, it just looks like a fade it's fine and it is fine and I don't lose sleep over it but it was a really good lesson learned um, about alternating skeins you can see the green through here so in different light it's really obvious so I thought I'd just show you that example so alternating skeins and it's called a helical method and I'm going to leave the link below for the YouTube so you can jump on and have a look at that. The other thing I learned, so much to learn with knitting now, but a friend of mine knitted, I can't remember what she was knitting, I think she was knitting a garment, and she come across a new provisional cast on for a, a, two, a one by one tubular rib. And it looked really good. And I sort of said, oh, I bet you that's really hard. And she sent me the video link, the YouTube video link. And I haven't done it yet, but I want to share it with you. So if you are wanting to do a provisional cast on with one by one rib, this is a tubular rib and it looks amazing. It's stretchy, so it's really good for necklines. And I'm going to leave you the link below so you can jump on and have a look at that um, tutorial. I think it'll be really, really useful. But I told you it was going to be chatty. <laughs> We're 15 minutes in and I really haven't even shown you much knitting. I have shown you my Miss Arena. And I am nearly close to finishing it. It is in my high twist. The colour I'm using is Volcanic. And the colour here is a really, really dark brown. It's almost black. And I got that out of my stash. And it was just a commercial, I actually think it was a baby, um, a fingering weight merino baby wool. I don't know. But the colour worked. Um, so you can stash dye for this. Um, for the colour work, because I think I only used about 50 or 60 grams. And there's 400 metres per skein, which is, I think I, I'm going to get this out of two skeins. I have used three because I had some left over, like I said, and they were different batches. But I think for the, I'm doing a size four, and I think that I'm probably going to get pretty close to doing it in two skeins but you probably need three to be sure especially if you want to add length so that's my Miss Arena I just love see there's a bit of lace work through the top there's cable um, between each pattern repeat and then at the bottom it gives you a choice of this eyelet pattern which I'm using or a pearl bump pattern so if you don't like that um, you know the holes there is a um, you can choose the other one which is I think it's just stockinette with pearl bumps so that's Miss Arena by Caitlin Hunter and that's my first whip I'm going to share with you and I'm just going to get a drink and I'm going to share with you my second whip Okay, hope you're still with me. <laughs> I told you this is going to be chatty. My second whip is um, Calypso by Black Cat Knitting Company. Um, and this is a, a New Zealand designer, Alana. It's called the Calypso Sweater. And this came out earlier this year. Alana has a yarn store called Lupine in Auckland. So if you're an Aucklander, you'll know that store, I'm sure. But I talked about this in my last podcast and I think I cast it on that night after I spoke to you so I had selected my colors um, I had swatched I had everything ready and I cast it on now first of all the color I'm using is called Bardi Da and it's a sports weight yarn by Yana Dalek which is from John Arbin Textiles in the UK and this is one of my favorite colors and Yep, you can see there's, there's blues and browns and it's just, it's just an awesome colour. Now, the reason I wanted to cast this on, you may know the story, is because I had almost inherited four skeins of spin cycle, four different colours. 
off a friend who was clearing out her stash and she wanted to sell some and I thought well I'll buy it because I've never tried it what I want to say about spin cycle is I actually have to eat a bit of humble pie so many many episodes ago right back in the beginning I wanted to do an Andrea Maori pattern and I did the calculations and it worked out that it was going to cost me nearly 800 New Zealand dollars to knit this particular garment and I got on here and I said are you kidding like that is seriously so much money that I just didn't see the value and I've heard a lot about spin cycle and I finally got some in my stash and I have used it now I started the first color I used is miss me and it's stunning I just love love working with this yarn so you can see it there I started up here there's a pico edge um that you it's a you, you knit it and then you fold it down on itself so it's got this beautiful neckline and then you knit down to here with your increases and then i that's where i've introduced my main color and i got down to here and i needed to introduce a second ball of spin cycle now i was almost tempted i love this so much that I was almost tempted to jump online and buy another skein of it. But I I exercised restraint. I said, no, that defeats the purpose while you're doing this. The purpose was to use up this spin cycle from my stash. So the second colour I introduced was Grumpy Birds. And I was a wee bit disappointed because the colour change in Grumpy Birds isn't... Um, isn't as what's the word isn't I shouldn't say isn't as good as but there's not as much color change as there is in the Miss Me so down here you'll see this blue is where I introduced my second skein and, and there was just no color change I went from all of this beautiful color change down to here with no color change and I was a bit disappointed and I, oh, I just keep knitting keep knitting and the, as I added in the dark of my main colour, I feel it's toned it down a bit and I'm happy with it now. So that's it there. I'm sure because I've pointed it out, you can really notice it. But I'm happy with it. I'm really, really happy with it. Um, I wanted to get this jersey to the point where I'm just doing the body in stockinette stitch because I'm he heading away this weekend. And I wanted a project I could take with me that was just stockinette stitch um, with no shaping or anything. So um, I did really push along to get this to this point. And I love it. I love the pattern. So thank you, Alana, for such an awesome pattern. And I've got to say that I am a convert to spin cycle. I still don't think I'll spend $780 and knit a full jersey in it. But I, I would definitely use it again for um, colour work. And I do still have two more skeins in my stash. So that's my Calypso. Once again, I'm doing the size 4 on the recommended needle size. I've made no modifications, actually. I've got gauge and, um, and that's it. Really, really happy. I've got my sleeves on hold on my cables there and um and i'm super super thrilled with it and i and i'm actually really excited to get this off the needles and wear it um we're halfway through winter here um over here in the southern hemisphere so i do really want to get this off my needles and wear it this season this winter so that is my calypso sweater um that's the yarn that i'm using and like i said really I, I, I'm a convert to spin cycle. I really do want to use my other two skeins in a project um, because look at that. That's just stunning. And I've got to say, I did see at Woolfeast um, last weekend, I did see a couple of two ladies wearing this um, Calypso. So that's that. 
And do you know, I haven't told you what I'm wearing. I normally do that in the beginning. I've got so much stuff around me that um, I apologise if I feel like I'm all over the place. I'm wearing the Cavat by Caitlin Hunter. hope I've got that right. I will leave the link below. I knitted this also in Yana Dalek sports weight and the colour I used was a colour they brought out, well both colours they brought out last year um, as a limited edition. I do still have this colour, I think it's called Confide in Me, but the body colour um, isn't available, available anymore. But there's about 18 colours, so if you wanted to knit this you would um, definitely find a colour combination. I I actually really enjoy my short sleeve sweaters um, and I'll probably wear them more in the winter than I do in the summer. Um, I love layering them over um, just a black merino. So yeah, I won't stand up and show you. I have shown you before. It's got lace work and bobbles. It's not too cropped. I did add a bit of length. Um, yeah, and I, and I do really enjoy this. this. So I do recommend it, the Cavat by Caitlin Hunter. Um, I was going to mention, so next week, no, this weekend, I've been invited to a knitting retreat in Masterton and I'm super, super excited. I've never been to a knitting retreat um, and this one in Masterton, so I'm flying into Wellington and my understanding is quite a lot of the ladies that are in this retreat are also going to Wellington. And it's, I think I've got this right, the Capital um, Capital Fibre, Fibre Fest? Capital, anyway, it's the equivalent to Wool Feast in Wellington. So I'm going to fly into Wellington and I'm going there as a customer, not as a trader. And I can't wait because I think I'm going to get to see some of the um, traders that I missed out on seeing last weekend. So I'm going to be there. So if you see me there, come and say hello. And then from there, we're traveling to Masterton for a two day knitting retreat where there's going to be workshops and a dinner and a knit and chat night. Um, I am going to leave the link below for this and it may be a bit late, but if you live in that, um, is it Wire, Wire Rapper region? Um, it might not be too late. This is the first year they're doing it. And my understanding is it's going to be quite a small knitting retreat, not big numbers, because it is their first year. Um, Donna from that area, Donna does a podcast called Blind and Knitting. She's legally blind, but she's a knitter. She is the person that's pulled this all together. And I'm super, super excited to be going. So um, if you're going, I'll see you there. Um, if you're not going and you live in the region and you want to go, it may not be too late, but I will leave the link below. So that's where I'm going this weekend. And that's why I wanted to get my Calypso um, to the point where I can just knit and chat and not have to worry about reading a pattern. Okay, that's my whips. I've got two new things in the pipeline that I want to cast on. And one I will cast on because I've nearly finished Miss Arena. So that gives me permission to cast on another one. Um, sorry, I haven't taken this one out of the plastic. So I showed you this last, I think it was on the last one. This pattern's by Pearl Soho. Oh dear. My fingers aren't working. It's a Pearl Soho pattern and it's called the Daily Pullover. And it's just a really basic stockinette stitch sweatshirt type style. I love the deep V-neck, which is what I want. Um, I love everything about this pattern. I love the simplicity of it. And and it's it's just something that I know, I know will be nice, easy knitting, but it will be a piece that I will wear. So I went through my stash. I haven't bought, well... No, I haven't bought yarn for this. I actually, this was in my stash. So I did a yarn swap with a lady recently, um, well, probably a couple of months ago. She ordered a product online. When she got it, the color wasn't right. It wasn't what she wanted. So, and I loved it. So we did a yarn swap. So she came here and got some yarn. 
but this is um, an indie dyer here in New Zealand. The yarn's called Prosper Yarn, and the colour is called Depth, and it's merino linen. So it's a 30-70 blend merino linen, and it's almost like a dark denim. It's a denim colour, and you can see those white. You can see the linen popping through there. And I just knew that this yarn is just going to be perfect for this pattern. So that is a new cast on. I will leave the link below, the Ravelry link for this pattern. And I'll also leave the link for Prosper Yarn if you um, are interested. If not, any of my Yarnadelic would be perfect for this pattern as well. I have to throw that in. <laughs> But I will leave the link below. So that's um, a new cast on that I've got in the pipeline. The next one, now I showed you this last podcast. What I want to say is I have a thing going on at the moment for stripes. I've got two projects here that I want to show you that both involve stripes and I'm really drawn to them. And as a knitter, you know, sometimes you go through a colour work phase. Sometimes you go through a sock knitting phase. You often go through phases. Um, well, I feel like I'm entering a phase of stripes. So I hope you want to come along with me. <laughs> so I have... Actually, I'll get it off. I've shown you this before. It's Stripes by Andrea Maori. It's a top-down yoke construction. Love, love, love it. Wear it a lot. But I wanted to do another one in my own yarn, in my yarn Adelic, that was knitted with um, another yarn. So there's the pattern, I should show you the pattern. So you've probably all seen it. So this, I will leave the links below for this pattern. This pattern, I would say, would definitely suit an adventurous beginner. So if you are new to top-down construction, I think this would be a really good one. And when I talk about the needles I use, you, it, it will tie it all together. Is what, probably what I'm trying to say. But anyway, we'll get to the needles later. But this is a basic top-down yoke construction. There's no raglan shaping. It's just yoke. And you could do this all in one colour. So I've seen this um, several times on Ravelry, just in it done in one solid colour. So I think it would be a really nice beginner, adventurous beginner pattern. And if this, if you weren't keen on the stripes, you could do it all in the one colour. But I had six colours picked. No, sorry, I had five. But I have added a sixth one since I spoke to you on my last podcast. Now... There's going to be no surprises here, but they're blue. <laughs> Just a whole lot of different shades of blue and grey and beige. But they're the six colours I have chosen to do my stripes. Each one of these 100 grams is 333 metres. So I've got over 1,800 metres of yarn here, which I know is going to be... Um, plenty enough so they're my six colors i'll tell you what they are so indigo dust is the darkest these are all named after songs i don't know if i've told you that john arbin um is really keen he's a real music buff and he loves the old vinyl records and when he produced this yarn he sat around with a whole lot of his mates one night drinking playing the old vinyls and they selected a song name for each of their yarn colours. So, and I don't know the songs, but I just know that's what they're named after. So this one's called Indigo Dust. And it's a beautiful dark, dark jewel, almost like a dark sapphire. This one is called Of My Hands. <gasps> Look at that. The next one down is called Bardi Da, which I just showed you because that's what I'm doing my Calypso in. So there's three. The next one is called Woman in Blue, which is this amazing colour. You see the bits of grey popping out there. 
woman in blue. The next one is called Nobody Knows and then Ordinary Joe. So there's the four shades of blue and then there's sort of two that are a bit more neutral um, that are going to work beautiful with these four. So they're my six colours. Now what I thought I would do, I'm going to put these online as a kit. So if you want to do this stripes jersey in these six colours, I'm going to put it there as a bundle, but I'm going to reduce the price. So these are $35 a skein. I'm going to reduce them to $30 if you buy the kit. So for the six of them, six threes, $180 um, that will cost you and you're saving $30. So you're saving $5 on each skein if you want to buy this as a bundle. So I'm going to call it the Stripes Bundle um, on my website. If you're watching me today, give me about 12 or 24 hours to do it, but it will be there. But the other thing I thought I'd do, if blues aren't your colour and you want to order another six from the range, number one, the first thing you can do is tell me the six you like via email. I'll lay them out together and I'll photograph them for you so you can see what they look like together. Um, and you can do that via my website. There's um, a part down the bottom where you can email me. But if you buy the six gains, I will... Um, tell me what the six are and I will reduce the price. Um, I'll do it as a bundle and you can jump jump online and buy them for the um, bundle price. Okay, so this could be a knit along, but so could the next one. So that's um, my stripes. I am going to probably wind this yarn today or tomorrow and probably cast it on next week. I'm pretty keen. Oh no, I'm going to cast on my daily, my daily sweater, my daily pullover. I don't know which one I'm going to cast on now. <laughs> I want them both in my wardrobe, but um, that's my stripes bundle. Okay. Isn't that exciting? Now the next one I've put together um, is one that's already on my website as a bundle. And I thought I would do it as a knit along. If you want, if it's something that you like, bear with me. I need a drink. <laughs> okay, I hope you're still with me. Um, this is just crazy how much I've got. I have to talk about. So I hope you're still with me. <laughs> this next next pattern, um, I have listed on my website, so you can buy the kit. And I thought I'd put it out there as a knit along, and. I have a community Facebook page, so if you haven't already joined that, jump over and join it. Um, you will get asked a series of questions that you have to answer, and you will be approved, and then you're part of this really amazing group that we've got there. Um, and the link below, the link is below in my show notes, but it's Unwind and Knit, um, and it's the community group. So... I'm going to put this out as a knit along. Now, I've talked about this before and I've wanted to do it for a long time. And once again, it's Stripes and it's by Andrea Maori and it's the Douglas Cardi. Now, I love the idea of just a big snuggly cardigan. And I've wanted to do this for quite some time. Now, I have selected the colours for this from my Apple Door DK range. Now, I did my Winter Beach Cardi in the Apple Door. You've all seen that before. And it's a beaut it, it is a little bit rustic, but that's why it's perfect for a cardigan because it's generally outerwear. In saying that, it washes up quite soft and I wear it all the time and it, it's not scratchy. But um, so Apple Door DK, once again from John Arbin Textiles in the UK. This is a DK and there's 250 meters per 100 grams. And these are the five colors that I have chosen for my Douglas Cardi. Now, if you look at those five, 
they're kind of in the same range but different but there's yeah um green sort of a, for a pop of color um the main color which is what the band is that sort of gray color um i've chosen this winter starboard and there is just a light gray but i really love this color because it does have a few other flecks in it the pink i've used is called slack slack mcgirdle these are all named after apples um different um varieties of apples hence the name apple door so for the green the turquoise that i've chosen is called tom putt how we go on there the pink is um called pig snout and then the pop of color the green is called golden knob so they're the five colours that I have chosen to do the Douglas Cardi. And what I've done, the same with the kit I did before. So these skeins are $35 each, but as part of the kit, the bundle, I've reduced them to 30. So there is quite a big saving. So I've listed two kits, a small to medium size, and then the large to extra large. So in the small to medium, you need two, four, six, eight skeins. And in the large to extra large, you need 10 skeins. So I've worked it all out. The small to medium, eight skeins at $30 each is $240 for the kit. But if you need in the large to extra large with the 10 skeins, it will be $300. So, and I get it, this isn't cheap. This isn't for everybody. But I actually think this is like a real forever garment that you could wear every season. Um, I just love it. And it's been on my radar for a while. And I have been asked um, about knit alongs and kits which is why I've chosen two that are two of my favourites that I really want to do and we can do them together as a knit along. So on my website, if you just search Douglas, um, the kits will come up, small to medium and, med and large to extra large. You do have to purchase the pattern separately um, through Ravelry and I'll leave the link. If you are not real confident with Ravelry, you can email me. You will have to pay me, but I will purchase it for you and gift it back to you and send it to you. Um, so that's an option if you're not sort of real confident using Ravelry. But I'm sure if you're here on YouTube um, watching me, you're probably all over Ravelry. But the Douglas Cardi... Um, when am I going to cast it on? I don't know. <laughs> Definitely the stripes I'm going to cast on in the next week or two. And I will post that um, in our Facebook group. So, if I haven't got you excited about a pattern and a new pattern and a new cast on yet, well, something's, something's wrong. <laughs> because I've certainly shared a whole lot. And I haven't even shared with you yet the new patterns that I've found. Okay, let me just check my list. Stripes, daily pullover. Okay. Shetland Wool Week. So every year there's Shetland Wool Week, they release a pattern, a colour work beanie. And I did the same last year and this year I've actually, um, I put some kits together. So I tried best I, can, I could to colour match all five kits using um, my Jameson and Smith. So I've got around 60 colours. There's about 100 in the range and I think I've got over 60. But a couple of you, um, well, a few of you actually, bought the kits to do this beanie. Now, my friend, this is kit number five. Let me just double check. And there is still, I think, two available. Oh, no, it's number three. So this is colourway number three. Now, I can't take the credit for this. My friend knitted this, um, and I met with her yesterday, and oh, I said, I'm podcasting tomorrow. Can I borrow it? 
So this is colorway number three. And it's just stunning. I just, the crown, look at that. And you've got this um, like rust and red. And then there's just this wee pop of bright yellow. So that was colorway number three for Shetland Wool Week. I'll leave the link below, but you can click on it. And I think it cost you a dollar um, UK sterling, a dollar, uh, one, one pound, which is probably about two New Zealand dollars. Um, but you just click on the link and it you pay your one dollar or your one pound um, and you get an electronic copy of it. Another one of my, another one of um, my, my customers, but she's in our group. I hope she doesn't mind me showing this. Um, she did colorway number five. Now I've only got one of these ones left because I, the charcoal um, I've ran out of and I have to do another order. But if you wanted, you could change out the charcoal for the black because they're really, really close. But this is colorway number five. And she posted this in our group and have a look. Oh, it's too much glare. There's a little bit of glare, but isn't it stunning? I think there's another, uh, there's the crown. So this is um, gray and black. Oh, let's get rid of that. Gray, black, pink, cream, and brown. And look what that produced. So, I just wanted to share that with you. They're the two beanies. But, um, yeah, there's five colorways, all the same pattern, but um, there's five different colorways. And they're on my website under Shetland Wool Week, those kits. Um, but, yeah, you can jump onto Shetland Wool Week website. Um, it's, it's quite interesting. So, that was that. Shetland Wool Week. Um, I did just want to say... I had been given away this pattern for free. It's glary as well. Um, this is the Sylvia wrap. You can't buy it. It's not on Ravelry. The lady that designed this, designed it, she dyes some of my merino. And she designed this for me to do as a giveaway at Woolfeast Wool Feast this year. And it was super, super popular. So many of you bought it. Um, but the giveaway has finished um, and I have ran out of um, printed copies that I was given away. I will do it again. If you really want the pattern, email me um, and I can sell it as a PDF, but it's not on, on my website. Um, but it has finished and I will do it again in the future. She is actually in the process of designing me another one. They're really easy. Um, they're one skein wonders. And um, yeah, so that promotion's kind of finished. Although it's still on my website. So if you get on and buy one in the next 24 hours, you'll probably still get it. That's that. Okay. I'm going to share with you some new patterns. And then I will go on and talk to you about my needle range and some of the notions that I use. So the first one, if you've been with me all year, you'll know that in the beginning of the, the year, it was actually December actually, I, sign, I signed up to Stephen West's um, Year of Socks and I haven't knitted any of them. I started the first pair and they're still on needles. But every month I get a free pattern dropped into my Ravelry library and I have been sharing them with you each month. Once he releases them to... Um, you can buy them individually. So that's why I showed them to you every month because you can buy them. So this is the June sock and it's called Rising Dawn Socks. And compared to all the other ones that he's done, these look really subtle. They, he's really calmed it down and toned it down because all of his others have been really bright and cables and all sorts going on. But this one here... Um, he does say it's a really nice, relaxing TV knit. And it's just, the pattern is slip stitches. So knitting and slipping. Um, so self-striping sock yarn. 
So if you're after a new sock pattern, that's Stephen West's latest one, Rising, Rising Dawn. And like I said, it's just a series of slip stitches. But they appeal to me. They'd be a lot easier and um, not so much concentration required as some of his others. Last episode, I had the lovely Gail come and be a guest speaker and she shared with us her crocheted rugs that she had done. Um, and so many of you just love them. I got a lot of really nice comments um, about having a guest speaker and about Gail's knowledge. And it, it was just really, really nice. And I really hope to have more guest speakers moving forward. Um, so if, you, if you've got something really unique that you want to share and you live in my area, contact me. You could be my next guest speaker. But when I had Gail here, she was wearing a jersey called the Corbus Sweater. And this is by Natasha Hornby. And you can't see too much because it's in a dark, dark colour. But I do um, encourage you to jump onto Ravelry and have a look at this pattern and have a look at some of the other projects. Um, but it's, it's really different and it's certainly something that I will leave in my baskets as a future pro project. So it's knitted top down. Um, it's got basket weave yoke. Um, it's got diamond shapes. It's got a lot going on. It's got um, I think it comes down into diamonds. There's a bit of shaping and there's basket weave and there's there's lace work and there's just a real lot going on, but in a really subtle feminine way. It's just, it, it was just stunning. Um, it's very size inclusive, this pattern. It goes through to a 3XL. It uses a four ply or fingering weight yarn. Um, you can do this in like a cotton silk blend as um, probably for more of a summer garment, but you can also use a wool blend and that would give you a warmer garment, but um, any finger in weight for ply. And there is um, a separate PDF that you download for all the charts. There are quite a lot of charts. So this is available on Ravelry. I am going to leave the links below, but I wanted to share it with you because it's what Gail was wearing and um, and we said it was the Corbus sweater by Natasha Hornby, but I didn't, we didn't actually say too much more about it. Um, but yeah, jump on a rabbit and have a look and I'm pretty sure that you will want to put this in your queue. The other thing, and I've said it before, but I'll say it again about Ravelry. If you go on and look in a pattern, make sure you click on the projects link. And that shows you what everyone else has done. Um, that pattern, but, but everyone else's version of it. And it's really neat because you get to see it in different colours and different yarn types on different body types. Um, yeah, it's really worth doing. Click on the projects link. So that's the Corbus sweater. Um, this one appealed to me as well. And I'm not sure whether it's pronounced cathedral or cathedral. Because for me, cathedral has a TH in it. So I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But it's called, it's from Units. Cathedral pullover. And sorry, the glare. I'm sitting on a different angle today um, and it's really dark and gloomy here. There's like lots and lots of cloud. So I've put a spotlight on and I think that's creating the glare, which isn't ideal. But anyway, jump on and have a look at it on Ravelry. This is done in a heavy DK or a worsted weight yarn and it's a 19 stitch gauge. So I think it'd be quite a, um, a quick knit, sort of. It's done bottom up. Um, the sleeves are worked separately in the round and then they're joined. Yeah, there's not much more I can say about it. It's it's just got beautiful pattern work through the yoke. So I think that's why it appealed to me. I probably won't cast this one on. This isn't going to be in my list. 
because it's it's a heavy DK or a worsted and it just doesn't get cold enough here and I would overheat in something in a worsted weight unless it was a cardigan that I can wear open um, or as a layer in piece and take it off but I thought I would share that with you because it might appeal to someone else the other two I showed you this one last time and a friend said to me oh but you know that there's another one that's actually a t-shirt so this is called the Laylee Sweater by Valentina Bodganova. And what I loved about this was the neckline and the lacework yoke. Like, isn't that just stunning? Um, and this is also the other thing why it appealed to me because it's done in a sports weight yarn. So my yarn Adelic would be perfect for this pattern. Now that's actually a sweater, um, long sleeve, top down so you do your yoke and your lace work and then it's um what's it called it's reverse stockinette so you're still just knitting in the round but what's facing is actually the knits the the knit side not the pearl side is that right reverse stockinette you know what i'm talking about <laughs> so it has written and charted instructions um yeah i think that's it's a 24 stitch gauge it's knitted with a 10 to 13 centimeter positive ease very size inclusive and a five ply or a sports weight yarn and this one is the fafala so it's really similar but it's a t-shirt and the lace work is different it's actually really different. It has um, parts that are gathered in to make them look like, I don't know, like flowers. And once again, once you finish that beautiful scallop tee and the yoke work, it's reverse stockinette stitch um, down below. Anyway, sorry, rattling paper. <laughs> um, That's all the patterns that I wanted to show you. So, sorry, I'm just working through my list. The Douglas Cardi Knit Along or the Stripes Knit Along. I will have those kits on my website. What, I'm gonna talk about my needles now. So we'll do a wee little Chalgu needle session. But what I am going to insert, so there's a lot of people, and I know this from being at Wool Feast last week, that still don't know what these cords are used for or how to use them. I've said many, many times, these are a game changer for me. I love them. I use them on every garment and they, they save a lot of time when you want to um, try things on. But for holding your um, sleeve stitches, when you separate for the sleeves, you know they're, they're just a game changer but there's a lot of people that still don't know about them so i probably about a year ago i did a wee little demonstration video on how to use them and i'm pretty sure the demonstration video is for the larger one so the small cable i recommend for a needle 2.5 up to a four mil needle and then the large cable i would recommend say from a four through to about a six so more for your chunky, or your worsted or your DK weight yarns. So I think the demo, I'm pretty sure the demonstration um, video is the larger, the larger cords because I was using, I think, a 5 mil needle and a DK weight yarn. So I'm going to insert that video now. It's only about two minutes, um, but it shows you how to use these cords and then you can judge for yourself whether you need them in your um, knitting kit. They are available on my website, but I'll leave the link below. So I'm going to insert that video right now. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate how easy and quickly it is to take your knitting um, from the needles onto a stitch holding cable to allow you to try it on. What I'm using is the large cables. Um, because I'm using larger needles with a DK weight wool. So I'm doing this on a five mil needle. 
on the body I used a 6mm needle and I used the same cable. So the cable comes in two sizes, a small and a large, and I'll demonstrate both. With the large cable, I would recommend anything from a, maybe a four to a four and a half mil needle up to a six, even a six and a half. So I'm just pushing that cable onto the end of the needle really quite firmly so it doesn't move. And then I'm just going to feed my stitches off the needle and onto the cable. Sometimes the odd stitch may stick and it may need a little bit of help feeding it across, but generally they feed across really easily. So this is a bigger project with a couple of hundred stitches and you can see how quickly I'm getting those from the needle onto the cable. Nearly there. Like I said, occasionally one may stick at the ridge and it's just a matter of lifting them and working them over that little ridge. Okay, so I'm just going to push the, all those stitches around. This is a 1.5 metre length cable, so you've got lots of room to play with. The one thing I will say is when you take your cable off your needle, it forms a bit of a suction and it's on there quite tightly. And if you just try to pull it, you're going to distort the shape of your cable. So what I recommend is just to get your needle underneath, sorry, not your needle, your fingernail, and um, work it off with your fingernail. Okay, so in about two and a half minutes, it's, I've managed to get all those stitches onto this cable and it's now ready for me to try on. Um, the cables don't need to be fastened at all. So with that 1.5 meters, there's plenty of cable left and those stitches won't come off. Um, it, it's, the cable's quite grippy and they're, they're secure there. So what I'm going to do now is try this on to make sure I'm happy with the overall length and then I'll come back and show you just how quickly and easy it is to get these stitches from my cables back onto my needles so that I can cast it off. Okay, I've tried my, it's my ranaculus. I've tried it on and I'm really happy with the length. So I want to put the stitches from the cable back onto the needle ready to cast off. For the couple of minutes this takes, it's such a well, um, it's just such a worthy thing to do, um, just to make sure that you're happy with the, the overall length. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna slide that cable onto the end of my needle. It's nice and tight. And I'm just gonna push all these stitches off that cable and onto my needle. Now the really good thing with this exercise also is that all the stitches go back onto the needle the correct way. So with the old method when I used to um, use a like a darning needle and a piece of waste yarn and I used to put it, all my stitches through a piece of waste yarn when I'd put them back onto my needle, for some reason they would always go on in the wrong direction. So the first round of knitting meant that you always had to knit into the back of your stitch to turn your stitches back around. I'm sure most of you will know what I'm talking about. Um, but as you can see, they go in from the cable back onto that needle really, really easily. Once again, I'm just going to get my fingernail under there to take it off and it's done. I'm now ready to continue knitting or ready to cast off. Um, 
I will demonstrate this again on the smaller cables using a smaller needle with a fingering weight yarn just so you can see how they both work um, just so efficiently and so easily. Thank you. Hmm, they're good aren't they? <laughs> um, I am going to talk about my needles now and the my knitting kit. Um, so if you don't want to hear about this because not all of you want to hear about what needles I use and why I use them. Um, thank you for staying with me this far and I hope you join me for my next podcast and don't forget to subscribe and leave any comments I do read and get back to everyone. Um, so thank you. But let's talk about needles. Okay, so when I re-entered knitting, I didn't do a lot of knitting for about 20 years and when I got back into knitting, there were lots and lots of changes. There was terminology I'd never heard of. Um, it was really quite daunting and overwhelming. But at that time, I had a lot of needles. I was, I was trying to knit everything. I literally had a plastic toolbox full of needles, full of cables, full of circulars. But every time I wanted to knit something new I never seemed to have had what I needed like so it was just becoming crazy I was spending a lot of money on needles that I weren't using and I was actually breaking I was using Nipro and I broke a lot of them the cables come apart from the needle I have been told that they have improved them so you know I'm not that's just what happened to me and I do tend to knit a bit on the night on the tight side so but what I'm saying is I had a lot of needles but I never really had what I needed and I was at a knit group um, probably six or seven years ago and I saw ladies using these so I'm like what are you using what are they and I built, bought my first kit about six years ago now Chalgu um, they're made in China the company's owned by two brothers one brother looks after the factory side and he is a real perfectionist and the other brother looks after sales and marketing. So it's the company's owned by two brothers. All of these needles um, are pre pre precision. <laughs> um, he's a perfectionist is what I want to say. So all of the needles, um, sorry, my kit is stainless steel. You can get a bamboo kit, but my kit is stainless steel and what I wanted to say is the cables are surgical grade cables. So the cables never kink or twist or they're just, it's seamless knitting that um, they join perfectly. I've just lost a needle, but I'll find out later. So my first kit was the small kit. And that's the small kit goes from a 2.75 up to a 5 mil. I prefer 4 inch. Um, but it does also come in a five inch set. So that's the small set of four inch Chalgu. The large set or what they call the complete set has all of those, but then it goes also from a five up to a 10. So you get both sides full of needles. I have since bought the 5.5 and the six, um, and I've used those when I've knitted Love Note or an Oculus. So you can add to this kit. You can buy all these tips individually and add to it. I've added a lot to it, but I also do a lot of knitting and I have a lot of projects on the go. But this one small kit, if you, unless you need 5.5 Melanova, the small kit is really all you need to get started. In the kit, you get the cables, now the cables, like I said, um, are surgical grade. Now, don't quote me on this, but what I was told, I don't know if it's true, but these are the same cables that they use when they do gastroscope, like surgical procedures, um, endoscopes, or where they put the camera down. Um, the cables, they never kink, they never, they're just perfect. So you get your cables, that's the wrong needle. And you get three size, sorry, you get your needles and you get three different lengths of cable. Now, with most patterns now that are top down that I talk about a lot and I knit a lot, 
they will say cast on don't quote me here but like cast on 110 stitches using a 40 centimeter length cable so what that means this is a 20 centimeter and then you've got 10 centimeters here and 10 centimeters here that gives you your 40 centimeters i'm just going to attach this that is a 40 centimeter cable and that is what you will use that is perfect for your collar and your neckline so and it's comfortable it looks a bit tight but it's really comfortable it's not so comfortable if you use the five inch but that's a 40 centimeter then your pattern will say you'll do a series of maybe short rows and increases and as you get down here you then have to change your cable to a longer cable so it might say um this is 40 centimeter then it might say go to a 60 centimeter or an 80 centimeter so then you put on your next length work down and then when you get to the body you may then go to even the longer cable so for the whole garment you've used the same tips if you're say doing a pattern that requires a 3.5 mil tip but all you're changing is your cable you can knit a whole jersey top down in the rounds with that that's the kit they sell these black pouches i sell these they're called black mesh pouches but these pouches are designed to fit in there this pouch holds like i said i've added a lot to this but it holds all my cables it holds all my end stoppers my t-pins what else is in here my ruler and these these are really good i used to think these were a bit gimmicky but they're really really good these are little what are they called rubber grippers you get them in a pack or two they're quite cheap but you grip your needle with that you put your t-pin in there and it makes it really tight it doesn't twist i have heard people say that they've just cut off a little square you can get those rubber sheets that you use for unscrewing lids off jars that works as well but these little grippers um what you have there i'm sure you there's a little t-pin that goes in the hole and you tighten it and then you release it to change but that's what they're for so all these bits and pieces that i've added fit into this mesh mesh pouch and this mesh pouch fits into here and that is literally my knitting kit i can go anywhere and that's all i take it's it's got everything that i need so i went like i said from a big toolbox to this little pouch now you don't need all of this but i just want to show you the other thing I have is my shorties. This fits in the front pocket. This is my short, it's called shorties set. And they come in two sizes. Now these are the small needles that go from a two mil through to a 3.25. These are little short ends. They also fit onto the cables in this kit. Yeah. So if you're doing a really small circumference, sleeves, socks, you can use these. And that gives you that really small circumference. I've, I've used these for socks when I've done colour work where I haven't wanted to use Magic Loop. I have friends that cannot use these. They say they're just too short. But what you get is a two inch and a three inch. So if you're doing a small circumference, you can use one of each. You've got your little cable. And what I do is I put the longer one in the hand, my working hand. So I knit um, European style. So in my right hand, I have the longer one. And in my left hand, I have the shorter one. Now with a little cable, that gives you a really small circumference. Now, these aren't cheap. And... You really don't need this kit unless you're doing a lot of small circumference work and you think that you'll get 
um, you'll get use out of them. But if you do get that little shorty set, that fits into that front pocket. That's my whole needle kit. So that's the Chalgu range. What I've talked about, you can also get in bamboo. Um, I way prefer, my choice is a stainless steel and it comes in four inch and five inch and my preference is five inch. So what I'm talking about is just my preference and my thoughts. It's, I'm just putting it out there and sharing it. Um, everybody's different and you may be sitting there going, well, that's a hell of a lot of money. That small kit's 200 New Zealand dollars. But what I'm saying is I had spent way, way more than that with this toolbox full of needles. So you kind of just got to weigh it up. Um, the other thing I use a lot, and I do get asked about these, so I want to tell you about them. So that's the interchangeable set. These here are also Chalgu, but they're the fixed cable. So these are the other thing I use a lot of. So this is a 30 centimetre fixed. So this goes from like a 2.5 mil right through to about a 7 mil. You can get all different sizes. But that 30 centimetre is what I use for all my sleeves. Because a lot of what I knit with is fingering weight, I tend to always need a 3.5, maybe 3.75, a 4. So I actually, over time, I have actually invested in the 30 centimetre in about four different sizes that I use a lot. And it's just so comfortable. You're knitting round and round. You don't have to worry about magic loop. They've got this bend, which makes them quite ergonomical. I use these a lot and I have friends that have said to me, Lisa, they're a game changer. They make knitting sleeves seamless and really quick. I used to get Sleeve Island where you sort of knit this beautiful garment. You think, oh God, now I've got to do the sleeves. I use these and I whip through the sleeves. So that's the 30 centimetre fixed and that's what I use them for. If you knit a lot of beanies, and I did bring one to show you. I always have a beanie on the go. It's a sort of, it's, the, the, it's that small project that I'll take if I'm traveling or in the car or in a waiting room. But if you knit a lot of beanies, this is the 40 centimeter. And this is perfect for someone that knits a lot of beanies. The only change you would have to make is when you're doing the crown. You would either have to change to Magic Loop or DPNs. But if you're just knitting round and round and round to do a beanie, that's the 40 centimetre and that's where I use a 40 centimetre. If you are doing a really big garment, say an XXL size, um, you would have a lot more stitches for your sleeve. You could probably use the 40 centimetre. But 30 centimetre sleeves, 40 centimetre beanies, this is how I use them. The other one I use a lot and I've bought as a fixed, I don't use my interchangeables, is for my sock knitting. So for my sock knitting, I use Magic Loop. And I use a 2.25 for myself. I like that tight gauge. For my husband, sometimes I use a 2.5, just it's a little bit looser gauge, so it gives him a little bit more stretch. Um, and I use Magic Loop. And that's, that's the only needle I ever need for sock knitting. Um, I had a friend say to me, why do you use the 100 and not the 80? I've tried the 80. I have an 80 because I bought one in, in the early days when I was still learnt, finding my way. I find the 80 is just not enough cable when you're doing Magic Loop. Um, I find the 100 a lot more user friendly for magic loop for sock knitting and you can i know people that buy these in a set of two because they do two socks at a time it's a two needle method um i have done it before but i can't remember how to do it 
but I know there's a technique where you actually use two sets of needles. But if you do a lot of sock knitting, you probably only need one size. You're probably generally a 2.5 mil or you know what your size is that you like to knit socks in. That's the 100 centimetre fixed and that's what I recommend. So what I've got is quite excessive. And I bought all of this long before I had my shop. So I was in your situation where I was buying it from a shop. And I will show you, it's a little bit embarrassing, but there's no shame in here. Please don't shame anyone because we're allowed to do it. But over six or seven years, these are my fixed. And this is how many I've accumulated. So I have quite a few there. And I have quite a few empty packets there on projects in the go. I keep all of the packets. All I do is snip the top off. I haven't got a... So when you buy them new, there's a bit on top. I snip that off and I keep all my original packets and my needles always go back into those original packets. And on that, it will have the length and um, the, the size of the needle. So now I'm being very honest. Please don't shame. That is the extent of my needle kit. But that is also six years worth of accumulation. But there's nothing that I can't knit using those. Now, I don't want to go on too much. So with Chow Goo, there is, if you're using the larger needles, you need a larger cable. It's a thicker cable. Um, so when you're ordering, you'll see under cables, there's mini, small and large. So the mini is for anything less than a 2.75 mil. Once you go from 2.75 mil to 5 mil, the cable size you need is a small. And when you go from 5.5 through to a 10, the cable size you need is a large. So there's mini, small, large. And in those three sizes, you've got all your different lengths. Please just email me or ring me. If you want to, if you're adding to your kit and you're not sure, um, you know, you may already have this kit, but you just want to buy an extra set of tips in the, in the large and you're not sure of the cable, just flick me an email or you can ring me. My phone number is actually on my website if you want to, if you're within New Zealand or Australia, call me and I will talk you through it because the range is really quite extensive. But once you've got that kit, easy peasy. Excuse me. Um, this may go down as one of my long, longest podcasts ever. I hope you've taken something from there. If you're not a Chalgu user, I understand that you would have found that whole subject really quite boring. Um, for me, Chalgu, Chalgu were a game changer moving forward with my knitting. I think I knit, I'm, I'm not scared to try new patterns because I know that with my Chalgu range that I can pretty well do anything from a collar to a sleeve to a cuff. Got it all done and dusted. That's all I'll say about Chalgu. I, I can probably talk more. I could talk about more for sure, but that I'll leave it there. <laughs> the next thing I wanted to show you, um, these have been in the making for many, many months and there was delays. But my um, these coloured leather bags are all in stock, but I've sold out of the green. These are a work of art. The workmanship that's gone into these you cannot fault. So each bag, um, it's a big bucket style bag. So it's got a quite a big base, so it does stand up on its own. It's full of um, internal pockets. They've matched the shui shui fabric to match the leather. It's thick leather. This bag is gonna last you a lifetime. Um, and I designed these, I knit off my iPad. I use Knit Companion and this comes with me everywhere. This stores all my patterns and all my charts. And I have actually designed that, that my tablet fits in it. My tablet's normally in a case, by the way, but um, lots of pockets. 
big enough to hold your iPad. And each one comes with an, a matching Notions pouch. And this on its own is just beautiful. I do sell these separately. Um, they're just called leather Notion pouches. But each bag comes with its matching Notions pouch. And I'll just show you the colours. So that's the orange. It's, I, I, on my website it's called purple, but it's like a lavender. This is my favourite. That's the pink. And that's the blue. And the handles are a really thick natural, natural colour leather. So there was a green. Actually, that's that's the green. This this was actually a sample one, so it hasn't got the logo and that. But the green has sold out. What I want to say is I don't think I'm going to be getting these again. I have got others and they're beautiful. But this actual... So what happened when I designed this bag and we looked at having it made, they were priced up and the order started. Since then, we're talking many months, there's been a lot of price increase, not only in the leather, but in the um, shui shui fabric that lines the leather. So to get the to get any more of these, there's going to be a really quite a substantial price increase. And I don't know here in New Zealand. So these with their matching pouch are 230 New Zealand dollars. The price would have to go up probably by at least fifty dollars. And I don't know that that is doable. Like I think two thirty is pretty expensive, but if you're getting up close to three hundred, yeah. But so um, what I'm saying is, these may not be repeated, and if they are repeated, there will be quite a substantial price increase. I have a new style leather bag, in, in some amazing colours, um, and they are a little bit. The price point's a little bit better, but they don't have the lining in them, and they don't have as many pockets but I'm going to share them with you on my next podcast I also um, have another product um, that I don't think you can get here in New Zealand and I'm really excited I will have it to show for you on my next podcast it's a product that I use all the time in my knitting but I've had to buy mine from overseas so I have spent many many months researching trying to source this product that I'm going to bring out under my own brand um, and I, I will wholesale to um, any retail stores but so I'm just teasing you with that you have to wait <laughs> um, I'll have that for you next time I'm exhausted so that was episode 43 I think I've covered everything on my list oh yeah, I did show you the Notion pouches, didn't I? So I just wanted to show, because that's my knitting kit. That's the whole extent of it. And like I said, you add to that, everything fits in there. But I, I do have a Notions pouch, and this is what lives in my knitting bag. And in that is literally just scissors, tape measures, crochet needle, stitch on hold pins little yeah tape measure row counter so that is what else is in my knitting kit it all fits into there um which is a whole lot nicer than a plastic toolbox <laughs> everything i've talked about today links will be below all the chow goo leather bags that i've talked about are on my website unwindedknit.com and the kits for the Douglas Cardi and the Stripes. Um, I know those kits are quite expensive. Like this wool, this yarn that I've got is quite expensive. But I also know that it's going to produce a beautiful garment. I know it's not for everyone. But if you're keen, even if you want to do that Douglas Cardi, put it on our community web, uh, our community Facebook group. I don't mind if you use another yarn. So uh, I just love to see what you're knitting. So um, please post your projects 
um, let us know what you're knitting, what the pattern is, let us know what yarn you're using. Um, and I'm really open to that. I know that not everyone's going to be using my yarn. Um, but for me, it's about the knitting community. It's not all about my shop. So I'm going to stop talking now because I'm just waffling. Um, yeah, I'm just waffling on now. Thank you so, so much for joining me. Um, come and say hello if you see me in Wellington. I'd love to say hello. I'm going to be wandering around in the morning. And um, please subscribe. That makes a big difference to my presence on YouTube. Um, please join our Facebook and Instagram group and just thank you. Thank you very much for sharing this time with me. It means a lot. Your feedback really means a lot and I really look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Thank you.